Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Amity Airfield is widely regarded as the most difficult level, or scenario as it's called in this game, in Rollercoaster Tycoon 2. In isolation there are other ones that are probably trickier, but it's very high guest call combined with a super early placement as the fourth of 15 scenarios in the English version of the game is what makes Amity Airfield so infamous. In this video we'll take a look at how a few Rollercoaster Tycoon players, including myself, absolutely destroyed Amity Airfield and got more guests than ever imagined possible. And unlike most Roller Coaster Tycoon stories, this one even involves some juicy drama. The goal of Amity Airfield is simple, have at least 3000 guests and a park rating of at least 600 at the end of year 4. The park rating is a value ranging from 0 to 999 and keeping it above 600 is usually not a problem in this park. Now the issue is the amount of guests that you need. 3000 in 4 years is quite a lot which is made even more difficult by the fact that you charge for the park entrance in this scenario instead of for the rides. This means that if you stop getting new guests most of your income goes away making it so you can't afford new rides and that's where most people get stuck. Once you do figure out how to keep a consistent influx of guests the question might arise how many guests can you get in these 4 years. That is what this video is about. It is entirely possible and even quite probable that someone somewhere optimized empty airfields to some degree before this, but our story starts on Monday February 27th 2017. Reddit user Planet Coaster Thing wanders over to the RCT subreddit and makes the post Your job is to improve a bad scenario from Rollercoaster Tycoon 1 or 2. Which scenario do you choose and how do you improve it? I saw this post and kind of jokingly suggested increasing the guest requirement of empty airfields from 3000 to 4000 to turn it into the ultimate challenge. At this time I had only beaten it once and just barely so I had no idea what was possible. But apparently I really wanted to know because less than 6.5 hours after my suggestion I posted to the subreddit that I had beaten empty airfield with a grand total of 5500 guests. What did I do differently to attract so many guests? Two things, firstly I built a lot of flat rides and cheap coasters. I'm pretty sure I did not yet know how guests exactly were attracted to the park back then, but I had figured out that lots of cheap rides is better than just a few expensive ones. Secondly, I advertised non-stop. Advertising is really strong and entirely independent from your natural guest generation making it a pure bonus and the best way to get a lot of guests very quickly. As is typical on reddit this was not left unchallenged. A while later someone else did the same but better and managed to beat it with about 6400 guests over twice the amount you need for the goal. I would show you the park, but unfortunately it has been lost to history. The reddit post about it has been deleted and it has not been archived anywhere. The only evidence I could get for the number of guests is when you search for it. Mind you, not even on google as I could not find it there, but on DuckDuckGo it does show up with the title saying 6420 guests. We do know that they used a lot of pre-built designs as some of the surviving comments are about that. Apparently I was also specifically challenged somewhere as immediately I took on that challenge and tried to beat it. The very same day I made this post saying I had beaten empty airfield with 7125 guests. This is that park and I'm not exactly sure why it's better, but maybe I didn't advertise 100% of the time in my previous attempt or maybe this one keeps the guests in the park for a lot longer. Either way this park handily beats the 64 400 guests won, but little did I know I was about to be absolutely destroyed. On August 28th at 1.31am Central European time a user by the name of Chattybutt posted this to r slash rct. Amity airfield max guests about 8500. This easily beat my record of 7100, but that's not the most impressive part. No, what's more impressive is the rest of the title that so far has been hidden from you. Whereas I needed the full 4 years to do this, Chattybutt reached this in less than 3. This blew everything out of the water and seemed completely unbelievable. So 
I accused him of cheating. I had done some tests and couldn't replicate their results and because little arrogant 20 year old me believed that he knew it all and no one could possibly be better than him, I said I believed that Chatty Bird had faked his guest count. Now, I was already quite good at the game at this time, so my massive ego I had back then wasn't entirely baseless, but it was still completely ridiculous as compared to what I know now, I was still laughably bad and you'll see why very soon. Chatty Bird rightfully wasn't just going to let this go and asked how he could prove that it was legitimate. I asked for some game files and he provided them, while also saying that he's a longtime fan of me, which pains me so much to see. Imagine achieving something incredible and then having the guy that is known for doing crazy stuff and who you admire very much call you a cheater. Instead of simply asking how he did it, I just assumed it was impossible, because if I couldn't do it, how on earth could anyone else? Anyway, I opened his park, removed the guests and did exactly what he said he did in the park, and it worked. I got the same insane number of guests. So, what did Chatty Put do differently? The park looks quite unique and mostly consists of modules that each contain two vertical drop coasters and a suspended monorail. These very cheap vertical coasters attract 95 guests each and guests will always ride a free transport ride if they stumble upon it, so the monorail keeps them in the park for longer. We didn't know that it worked exactly like that at the time, but Chatty Putt was quite close with his reasonings. He included the vertical drop coast because it's a cheap ride with good stats, and the monorail because it's a covered ride that guests will ride in the rain, and because it's a ride with always 100% popularity. The popularity of a ride is simply the percentage of guests that decide to ride it when they bump into the queue line, which for free transport rides is always everyone, hence the 100% popularity. This even ignores rain, so the fact that it's covered doesn't actually matter. This isn't the biggest reason he did so well though. No, the main reason is simply that he constantly ran all available advertisements. Remember when I said I advertised throughout my earlier attempts as well? I did do that, but I only ran the campaign for the park and the one for a specific ride, not the three other available ones. I accused someone of cheating because they did better than me, while I didn't even know that the other ad campaigns also generated guests. My ego was way too big at the time, and if you're somehow watching this chatty bud, I'm sorry. And I'm also very thankful for your work, as this park was the start of me learning so much more and getting so much better at the game, so thank you. Anyway, now that I've become a drama channel, it's time to see what happened next, as the story isn't over yet. Instead of just taking his park and running with it, I wanted to build my own to do it properly, and when doing so with an extremely similar setup, I too managed to get almost 9000 guests in less than 3 years. Keep in mind that I had no idea why specifically this worked, I just copied what someone else did. A question you might have is why are we stopping over a year before the deadline? If we can get 9000 guests in 3 years, shouldn't we be able to get about 12000 guests in 4 years? Unfortunately not, as we had hit the sprite limit. You can only have a maximum of 9601 sprites in your park, which includes guests, staff, ride vehicles, litter and more. Because we both had a lot of non-guest sprites in our parks, we couldn't quite reach 9000, but that's not impossible. Today, 6 years after Chatty Putt revolutionized Empty Airfield, I want to come back and use all the knowledge I have acquired since then to finish it once and for all. I am going to get as close to that theoretical maximum of 9601 guests as I can. To get this many guests, we'll use something known as a maze trap. Build any ride with the queue line connected to the park entrance and the exit connected to a single piece of disconnected path. Then build a food stall, drink stall and toilet on that single piece of path and you're done. With a few entertainers to get the guests as happy as possible, 99% of the guests will stay happy on that single tile forever and never want to go home. Now we just need to run all the ads all the time and build enough rides to attract the over 9000 guests that we want. 
For this, I'm going to build 200 ferris wheels. They attract 45 guests each, giving us a soft guest cap of 9000, plus whatever the monorail and stalls give us. The reason I went with a monorail by the way, is that guests will always ride it when it's free, and it also has a reasonably high throughput allowing it to process all the incoming guests. After 2.5 years of this, we have reached 9000 guests, beating any previous record. But we can go further. A month later we stop getting guests at a count of 9294, meaning we have hit the sprite limit. It's time to get rid of the ferris wheels, as they each take up one sprite slot. They have served as well, but since advertisements ignore the soft guest cap, they can carry us to the end without needing any rides. I will also reduce the length of the monorail trains and fire as much staff as I can to get the guest count as high as possible. It's now October year 4, less than a month away from the deadline, and we have 9588 guests, just 13 under the maximum possible. It's time to remove all remaining non-guest sprites, which are the monorail and the remaining staff. We can simply pick up the 13 new guests and place them on the single path tile by hand. They might want to leave very quickly, but that's fine, we can handle up to about a few dozen lost guests. A little bit later, we get our 9601st guest, making this the perfect Amity Airfield playthrough. The only reason we still have this toilet is that otherwise we can't get to 600 park rating, but we can remove it if we do so just a few seconds before the deadline, as then the park rating won't update in time to make us fail. And that's exactly what we do. To be nice, I will also give the guests a cold bath, and we beat it with nothing in the park except 9601 drowning guests. Amity Airfield has been completely annihilated. Nowadays, the sprite limit in OpenRCT2 is many times higher, allowing you to beat Amity Airfield with an estimated maximum of about 15,000 guests, but I leave that for someone else to attempt. To see the story of the longest 10x10 roller coaster, click right here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video.